Thank you so much for joining. Um, this is a live product demo and it happens every time, every week, excuse me, at this time, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm your host, Sander Bautzlar. I'm on the uh, marketing team and I'm excited to be joined by my colleague, Neil Spoked, who is an automation expert and a senior director of growth here at Trade.io. Niels was previously at New Relic leading the self-serve business. Um, and Niels, would you like to say um, a few words? Sure, thanks, Sander. So yes, as, as uh, Sander mentioned, I used to uh, work at New Relic where I headed up their self-service business and it was actually where I became uh, a power user of Trey. So as uh, you might expect, when you're thinking about a, a large scale SaaS company with a freemium model, uh, dealing with things at scale becomes super important. And Trey was really an integral piece of our tech stack there to do things um, along the lines of what we're talking today, just personalizing communications and follow up. And um, I'm just uh, excited to be here and show you a little bit about what Trey has to offer. Today, we're going to go over a marketing personalization use case. I'm not sure about you, but we're doing lots of webinars here at Trey.io. We have this uh, weekly product demo webinar, but we also have monthly customer trainings through Zoom and thought leadership webinars as well. All of the information that goes through Zoom is incredibly useful for the sales team. The polls answered, the questions asked, and other information that lives in Zoom could be leveraged in other platforms and tools. It can also be leveraged by the sales team. Um, so Niels is going to show us how we can get attendee data from Zoom, send it to the contact or lead owner in Slack, and then add the person to an outreach sequence. If someone attends a Zoom webinar, we want to get their duration. We also want to get the name of the webinar and perhaps other relevant information that will be useful um, for the sales team during their follow-up. We not only alert them as soon as the webinar ends, but we also add that person to a sequence in outreach. Okay, that's enough of me talking about this. Let's see how we can automate this process in the Trey platform with Niels. Niels, over to you. Awesome, okay. So as Sander mentioned, you know we're all spending a lot more time doing digital marketing these days. Uh, things like this uh, weekly webinar that we're holding right now, right? These are, these are high production events and uh, they take a lot of time and energy to put together. And um, what we really wanna be spending our time and energy on when putting events like this together is uh, making sure we have great content, uh, making sure we have good speakers, making sure that we have people showing up. And what we don't wanna be spending a lot of time on is all of the sort of manual processes that come with uh, running this program week in and week out, especially when they're repetitive and things like that. We don't wanna do that. We wanna make sure that since we're putting so much time and energy into these um, types of, of um, marketing events, right? We wanna make sure that we're not dropping the ball. And, and so what one of, the one of the simple things that we actually did um, in direct response to this exact webinar was, was the use case we're show gonna show you today. And, and so the plan here is, uh, let's just assume that this webinar ends. What do we do? Uh, well, the first thing we want to do is we want to see who attended, right? So we need to pull down a list of attendees from Zoom. Uh, as Sandra mentioned, we want to give some good context to our sales folks of how long did each participant spend in attendance to the webinar? And then we want to follow up immediately through an outreach sequence with a, any prospect that attended on behalf of that salesperson. And we want to slack that salesperson immediately and give them this uh, helpful information so that they can prioritize their follow-up uh, and get better context again about what their prospects are doing um, in attendance. So let's take a little bit of a look at how something like this might look inside uh, the trade platform. Can, uh, Sander, can you give me a thumbs up? Can you see the uh, dashboard page here good? Yes, you're good. Awesome. Okay, so what you're looking at here is the first view that you would see when logging into Trey. And there's a couple things I'll point out before we actually dive into the workflow itself. So 
here in this main panel are all the workflows that uh, I, I have in my personal workspace. A personal workspace is like a private sort of folder, if you will, where you can have your own automations. They're just yours um, that you manage. And there's all sorts of uh, different reasons why you might have uh, workflows, um, for example, for this webinar process. Um, in addition to that, what we have is we have a, a template or a library of templates where we have example workflows that you can uh, look at and think uh, are used for inspiration. We have a place where we manage all the authentications to our various SaaS tools that we use. And um, as I mentioned, you have your personal workspace, but we also have an organizational workspace. And this is a place where you can collaborate with other individuals in your organization if you're sort of managing a set of shared automations. So for example, I uh, lead our marketing operations team and all of our, our lead operations and lead management processes um, sit at our organization level because our operations teams collaborate on those things together. So in order to build a workflow, obviously the first step we wanna do is create that workflow. And so by clicking this button here at the top right, the first thing you'll be prompted to do is to name your workflow. And as you can see, I'm getting in some auto suggestions here. We use a sort of like a naming convention because I run over 175 production workflows. Um, so what I typically do is I like to say, who owns this particular workflow? What team, right? In this case, our demand team runs our webinar uh, uh, processes. So I would preface that with demand and then I would just give it a really simple name for uh, what does this thing do, right? And so I might call this our weekly demo wrap up uh, process. I also like to version them. So I have a, a version number here, like a major version. So this would be like a whole refactoring of the workflow. We have a minor version where we're adding little bits to it and we have a patch version. Now this is a sort of a on the run side of a crawl, walk, run of managing automations, but uh, it's helpful to know this sort of stuff because then you can know how things are evolving over time. It's just a matter of personal preference, really. So every single workflow starts with a what we call a trigger, right? What makes this thing happen? And in this case, we're talking about a Zoom webinar. And so one of the helpful things that Trey has is it has lots of pre-built triggers with many different SaaS services. Uh, that you'll see if you sort of scroll through this. And, and you can subscribe to, the, to different events coming from these services to trigger all your automations for any number of use cases, as Sandra had mentioned. In addition to that, uh, we also have what I would call more generic triggers. So for example, if you want to trigger an automation through a form, maybe you have like a service desk, an internal service desk use case where you're sort of collecting requests from different people or if you just wanna run it manually, one off, or if you wanna schedule something to run it once a day or every hour, whatever it is, you can do that. Or if we don't have a pre-built trigger with any service, you can generically subscribe to any service with our webhook trigger. So there's lots of flexibility here for you to uh, create your automations. So essentially, if there's a data source, our, our sort of phrase is we can connect to it. And in this case, we wanna look at Zoom, right? We wanna know when a webinar ends. So I'm gonna pick Zoom. And the first step you'll see is this trigger step that we need to configure. Now, before we go into that, I wanna give you a quick tour of our UI. So what you're looking at here is what we call the canvas. This is where you build your automation. It's a drag and drop interface. There's no coding required where you can put these integrations together and put your business logic along with your sort of connections to various services here. So you can sort of orchestrate these processes uh, in whatever manner you see fit. In this case, when I wanna set up a trigger, the first thing I wanna do is authenticate to my service. Now I already have an authentication for Zoom set up, but if I didn't, I'd simply click this add new authentication button and I can go through an OAuth prompt where I simply get a screen that allows me to connect to my Zoom account. And we handle that all for you seamlessly. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and pick one of our pre-existing authentications. 
And then I'm going to come down to this next uh, section in what we call this properties panel, where you do all the configuration. And I'm going to say, what event do I wish to subscribe to? And there's all sorts of uh, pre-populated events that I can choose from here. These are all different things that happen in Zoom. So in this case, I'm curious about what events can I subscribe to for webinars? And you can see I have lots of different things. When they're created, when they're deleted, when they're ended, this is what we want. Whenever our webinars end, we want to run this process. I can even go to this output step and I can get a sense of what data will this trigger give me, right? And I can see all sorts of helpful information, such as duration. If we remember back to what we're trying to accomplish here, one of the things we want to say is how long did somebody spend in this webinar? The topic, what webinar was it? When did it start? All sorts of, again, helpful information. So the next thing I want to do is I want to get all the attendees from my webinar. And that's where our connector panel comes in helpfully. So here at the top left, we have this connector library. And when I open it up, I can see all sorts of helpful helpers for me to do things like make connections and make business logic decisions, things like this. So as you scroll through this connector panel, you can start to see we have what we call our core helpers, where you can do things like true-false evaluations. You can do branching, all sorts of things like this. You can read CSVs. You can put delay steps in. You can connect to a GraphQL endpoint. You can use a generic HTTP client to connect to an API that we might not have a connector for. You can loop over records. There's lots of things you can do here. And so what I'm looking for is my Zoom connector. And what I want to do is I want to pull this from our connector panel onto the canvas. It's that simple. So now what I want to do is say, how do I get my participants from this webinar? Well, what I can do is once I pull this onto the, the panel, I want to come back to the, to the uh, input step, and then I want to choose what we call an operation for that connector. These operations are essentially functionality for each connector and what they can do. And, and so you can see, you can just kind of scroll through this, but I can do things like adding meeting registrants, create a meeting, create users, create a webinar, right? All these various API endpoints that we've pre-configured our connectors to use. And in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna list the participants from our webinar. So if I sort of scroll through uh, this list, right, I can find that uh, specific uh, operation and, and I can get it, uh, I, can, I can get that from here. So uh, in any case, uh, I, I, what I would like to do in the interest of time is just sort of kick over to this pre-configured uh, setup where you can kind of see all the steps and I'll walk you through step-by-step step on how this works. Um, so in this case, the operation I wanted was list webinar participants report. And one of the key things I need to provide here to, to get it is I need to understand, well, which webinar do I want to, to pull participants from? And that comes from our trigger, if you remember. And so in order to get that, all I have to do is pull this, what we call the connector snake, to a previous step in order to get that, which I've done here. And you can see I'm pulling the ID from the trigger. And then what I'm doing is I can see that if I look at the output of this step, we get a list of participants. And in this case, I want to loop that list. So that's what our loop connector does, is I can use this to then snake over to the participants, choose it from the menu, and it says, now I'm looping a list of the participants from my previous step. And if I want to see what that actually looks like, I would go over to the debug panel. And then I can see a record of all the runs from this web, uh, from this workflow. And I can see the inputs and the outputs of each step. So in this case, my trigger has a simple payload which has some data in it, including the ID of our webinar. And I've passed that as an input to my list participant step 
And the output of that is a list of participants. And now I'm looping over each of those participants. And each iteration of my loop is one of the participants from my webinar. And here you can see I have an example record for when Sander attended one of my webinars. And I can see, oh, I have a duration for how much time Sander spent in here. Now this duration is in seconds, right? So this is, he spent 1,383 seconds inside uh, our webinar here. Now that's not very intuitive uh, to a salesperson. So I need to convert those seconds to minutes. And so that's where our more of these connectors come in useful, right? So I have what we would call a generic helper here, which is a math helper. And I've pulled it onto the canvas and in order to convert seconds to minutes, we simply use a divide operation where I have passed it the duration from the loop for this participant and I've divided it by 60. Now in this case, when we do that, if I come back to my logs and I actually look at an example of this, what we'll see is that the value will be more than like, it'll be more than a few decimal places, which, you know, I'm a little bit OCD. I don't want to send somebody uh, so many decimal places, right? So I can use another math helper to actually round that number down to two decimal places. So it looks a little prettier, right? And, and now that I've done that, I'm ready to actually send a message uh, to the prospect and I'm ready to send a Slack message to the owner of that prospect. So I need to get a little data about the prospect from Salesforce. So in this case, all I have to do is drag in my Salesforce connector onto the workflow. I'm going to use my find records operation. And I want to pick some data about that prospect that will help me personalize my message. Who's the owner? What is their outreach ID so I can send them a message? What's their first name? What's their job title? What's the ID of their record in Salesforce? I'm going to use this owner ID to get some more information about the owner so I can personalize uh, who sends that message in outreach. So again, I have another find record step where I'm pulling a user record this time from Salesforce. And I want to get their email address. And I want to add a condition where the user ID that I'm sort of going to pull was the owner from the previous step in Salesforce, right? So I can just simply pick my owner ID from this list. And now I'm getting the exact owner who owns this prospect in Salesforce. Hey, Niels, now, um, can, I, can I interrupt for a sec? Sure. We just got a, a really good question from uh, Derek who asks, what if, the, what if it doesn't match? So if the name doesn't match what's in Salesforce, um, and I, I know we can do some fuzzy matching logic in Trey, and I, I don't want to uh, derail this demo, but could you quickly talk about how you could um, do some logic to match uh, different names? Yeah, so this kind of things happens, right? So in, in the interest of the demo, we, we have a very simple workflow here. But, but when that sort of things happens, you, you can actually, there's lots of things you can do. So you can, you can do some fuzzy matching um, for sure. Uh, you could also, uh, it could also be the case that that lead record doesn't even exist in your CRM yet. And so in the case that let's say find prospects did not return a match. And let's say in this case, we wanna just create that user. All I would need to do is pull in a Boolean here to the workflow. And I would say in this case, essentially did Salesforce one, right? So if I wanna say, did the total number of records, is it essentially greater than zero? And if it is, right, then, or it could be even equal to one, right? Like, so you know there's only one record. There, there's lots of ways to handle this. If it did, then put all my follow-up processes here, right, in the true branch, and if it didn't, I actually want to create a record first and then do my like follow-up process. Or I wanna Slack uh, our salesperson and say, hey, there's multiple records here. How would you like to handle this? You know, please make sure that they get sequenced, whatever it is. Um, the, 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 the short of it being that the flexibility of the platform allows you to sort of iterate and build in 
uh, tolerance to uh, sort of edge cases as they pop up, right? So, you, so, and the nice thing is, is that you'll know exactly, there's no black boxes here, right? That's a, one of the problems often with like native integrations and things like that is either A, like they don't quite do what you want, right? They don't do this exact process in the exact way you want, or something goes wrong, you're not sure what happened. And, and that's one of the benefits of the trade platform is that like you literally know every single thing that's happened at every single step in each of your processes. And, and another thing I'll point out just to that end is I, you can even set up alerting. So if anything ever fails in your workflow, then what you can actually do is you can, you can set up a, uh, an, an alerting workflow where um, you, in, inside the configuration of it, where it will send you, where you can do things like Slack yourself. Uh, for us, we actually send records to our data warehouse where we're tracking every single error and we have a dashboard to monitor, you know, if what goes wrong, where, when. Uh, and, and it helps you sort of, as you again, get a larger portfolio of automations to manage, it helps you handle those things. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Uh, and in this case, you know, again, what we want to do is, is, is after we've gotten our prospect and we've gotten who the owner is, the next thing we need to do is we need to get the ID of the mailbox from outreach for um, the specific owner, right? So we can pass it all this data um, uh, from one step to the next. Then we want to create a sequence state, right? So in this case, my sequence is sequence 656, right? That's, that's my weekly demo webinar follow-up sequence. And it wants to be sent uh, from this mailbox, who's the owner for this prospect, right? Which I got that data from Salesforce before. And this, again, like this really sort of visual way in which to build this logic makes it really simple. And then, then finally, what I need to do is I wanna Slack my AE. And the first step of Slacking AD is, AE is to get their Slack ID. I need to know who to Slack, right? So, so I have an operation to get a user by email address, which I've, I've pulled that email address of the owner from my Salesforce two step. And the output of this step is gonna be a user object, including an ID, which I'll then pass to a Slack message where I give them lots of helpful information. If I wanna send a message to the owner ID from Slack one, and I wanna say, hey, name, right? Owner name, hey, Niels, great news. Your prospect attended our weekly demo webinar, which I got from the trigger, right? That was the topic that we mentioned before. Here's what happened. And I can add some helpful context and I can say, oh, they spent this much time. We added them to this sequence, check it out. Um, and the way I do that is I can add attachments, right? These are, these are sort of Slack things, right? So I can say, okay, the title of this, the, the title of this, met, this person is their name. Here's their job title, which I got from Salesforce one. I link it to the specific contact in Salesforce. I tell them how much time spent in attendance, which I pulled from my math helper here. I tell them what outreach sequence they were added to, all this helpful context, right? I can, I can add all of this in. And so in this case, I'm gonna force this workflow to run. And so I'm just gonna rerun a previous run of it. And we can actually see this thing happen in real time. So while this is running, I just want to remind everyone, I know that we're at time, uh, but I just want to remind everyone that if you have any questions, uh, please ask us in the Q&A um, and I will let Niels do his thing. Ah, sorry about that. I went a little long, but anyway, so here's my Slack notice, right? So great news, Niels, right? Niels, you, it's very meta here, uh, attended uh, the weekly demo. We spent 5.38 minutes in it. Here's the outreach sequence that we added him to, right? You can click straight through to the contact or the outreach sequence itself. And if I uh, wanna come on over uh, uh, and, and, and actually see, excuse me, what that, what that looked like, right? I can, I can log straight into outreach and see you know, what that user has done. Um, so again, oops, need to log in. But in any case, that's that's the concept here, right? The concept is that you can you can build these ideas and iterate on them super fast. Um, and yeah, that's the demo. Great, thank you so much, Niels. I am going to launch one 
quick poll before everyone leaves and we'll share my screen again. So thanks again for joining. I hope you all enjoyed this demo. Um, and so there are three things um, that you can do. Um, the first is this poll that you're seeing. Please um, give us feedback on this weekly demo. We really appreciate it. Um, the second one is uh, you can actually try this out yourself um, through our um, trial program. And I'm going to drop the link in the chat right now. So you have it. Let me see here. So you can actually start automating um, yourself and uh, through a two week trial that we offer. Um, the second one, or the, finally, the third one is if you'd like to see a more personalized demo, um, I'm going to drop another link uh, where you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one demo. All right, I just added that to the chat. So if there are any other questions or you have any feedback or suggestions, um, I'm going to stay on this uh, webinar um, on the chat. You can still ask us questions, um, but from us at Trade, thank you so much for joining. Feel free to use the same Zoom link to join um, the next week's weekly demo, uh, which will be the last one for the year.